You're listening to the Mastermind Parenting Podcast with Randy Rubenstein, episode 103. My name is Randy Rubenstein, and welcome to the Mastermind Parenting Podcast, where we believe when your thoughts grow, the conversations in your home flow. On today's episode, I am featuring sleep consultant Corey Greenberg in a new sleep segment that I'll be doing ever so often. And Corey answers a listener's question that somebody posted to me. And I think you'll find what she has to say really interesting. So enjoy. Here's a question about sleep that I am going to turn over to Corey Greenberg, sleep consultant. She says, hi, thanks for doing this. I live in Houston. I have a two-year-old and a three-and-a-half-year-old boy. I have a two-year-old girl and a three-and-a-half-year-old boy. I love seeing the world through the eyes of my children, and I would love to learn how to better connect with and be accepting to my children. In, in particular, I need to learn how to get my children to do things that I need them to do when I want to, uh, like getting dressed quickly in the morning so I can get to work on time. I also would love to wean my children of sleeping with me without resorting to cry it out. Thanks. So Corey, I wanted to read to you the whole, the whole situation because I think it all blends together as both you and I know that uh, the sleep situation when you're having sleep problems, it doesn't happen in a vacuum. Usually we can see all kinds of other things that are happening during the waking hours that affect how the family is sleeping. And so I wanted you to hear her entire question and speak to it and let us know your thoughts. And uh, I think everybody will be really excited to hear what you have to say about this. And because I know you so well, I'm sure that there will be not to put the pressure on, but I'm sure that, you know, with your background and all that you know as a person who is a trained therapist, I think you will find, you'll probably have a lot to enlighten us on that maybe we didn't think about it, so uh, that we didn't think about before. So thanks for weighing in. Appreciate it. Hey, Randy, this is Corey. Um, I would love to respond to your um, listener's scenario about her two-year-old and three-and-a-half-year-old. Um, this is actually my favorite age of kids and families to work with because I usually start with a family when they're absolutely desperate. And um, that accident, accidental bed sharing is a very, very common issue that happens. Um, and it can happen for so many reasons. It happens with good sleepers who all of a sudden go through something and they seem to need mom and dad more at night. And that might be, have been for a short time. And then it was just kind of a habit that started and then it becomes really difficult to break. Um, or it could be a kid that has just always struggled with sleep. And, um, you know, that's just been the family's survival mode and, and they're just ready to have their own bed back. Um, so I, like I said, I love working with this age and this particular issue. And when I do work with families on this, it's, you know, we spend the first probably hour of our time together, not even really talking about sleep. And I think that's kind of surprising to some people because when they call me, it's for a sleep problem. However, um, especially when you're dealing with toddlers, it's a lot of other issues that are contributing or it's coming out as a sleep problem. So um, typically when I see, you know, there's a co-sleeping situation, it's a kid who either has some anxiety um, about any number of things or it's just a need for connection and closeness that they're that they're needing. And um, a lot of times I have, you know, working parents who don't get home till five, six at night. And then it's like this evening rush to get everything done. Um, and unfortunately, sometimes that leaves little time for that deep sort of one on one connection that kids are really wanting and needing. Um, and then, you know, what just happens is they wake up a little bit at night and they just want that cuddle time or that closeness time. Or, you know, even if they don't go to bed on their own, or if they do go to bed on their own, they need that in the middle of the night. Or it's that it gets, starts getting dragged out at bedtime and they come up with a million excuses for why, you know, you 
can't leave the room. And as a parent, I think we just feel a little bit guilty because we see through it. We know that, you know, they're just wanting us not to go. And it really pulls on our heartstrings and make us, you know, get into this pattern of not being able to kind of set a boundary or put our foot down around um, sleep. So, um, like I said, the first thing I kind of want to look at is what is at the root of why those kids are wanting to be, you know, in this mom's bed every night. And like I said, connection is a big thing. Um, the other thing that I touched on is anxiety. And so that could also be, it's not necessarily like anxiety that, you know, your child needs play therapy for. It could be, but it could just be that, you know, they're not feeling very self-confident. Um, and so one of the ways that I work on sort of building self-confidence with kids is to, you know, give them lots of little jobs to do around the house that they can feel like they're helpful and that they're sort of contributing to, um, the functioning as a family. And, um, when I was mentioning connection, one way that you can sort of hit those two birds with one stone is if you're getting home at five, six o'clock and the first thing you got to do is put dinner on the table, try to incorporate your toddler into you know, that whole process. So whether it's, you know, asking them to bring the forks to the table or help you stir a sauce or something, and then acknowledging how helpful they have been and what role they have played in helping you as a family. Um, that serves the purpose of connecting with them because you're really engaged. And it's also moving things along and getting things done um, and sort of helping them with that self-confidence. Because in order for them to go to sleep all night by themselves, they need to feel like they can do that, right? And so um, it's important to kind of allow them those opportunities to do things, you know, on their own. The other thing that I know Randy talks about a lot, and I really try to focus on um, with toddlers um, to meet that connection need, is the one-on-one -on -one time. So I like to call it, and Randy calls it pet time, I call it like mommy and insert kids time, so mommy and jack time or daddy and Jack time. And I really only ask that it's like 10 or 15 minutes. And I like it to be sort of before the start of the bedtime routine. So that, um, you know, before you start that where you're marching towards bed and the kid knows like, okay, you know, my time with mommy or daddy is about to come to an end for the day. Um, I like to give that hit of that really connected one-on-one -on -one time and labeling it that way it helps you sort of get credit in the kid's mind. So it's time for mommy and Jack time. Like, what do you want to do today? And then you sort of do that, whatever the kid wants to do, you put your phone away, you're like very engaged in what they're doing. And then um, at the end of it, you say, I had so much fun during mommy and Jack time. I can't wait to do it again tomorrow. So those two things um, just off the top of my head really help sort of build that connection and that self-confidence that really affects your child's ability to go to sleep on their own. Um, and I know the, the caller mentioned, you know, not wanting to do cry it out. And I will say cry it out is a very loaded term. Um, and it has like a very, you know, it, I think it just invokes this feeling of guilt, like that you're just going to leave your child, abandon them. And it, it's very cold sounding. Um, and I think there's a big difference between the idea of that, which I think moms are like, there's no way I, I could ever do that. I'm going to, you know, emotionally scar my child and setting some boundaries around the rules that you feel are important for your family. And, um, you know, sleep is at the very top of the priority list. It has to be for everyone, for you as a mom and also for the kids. And so it is totally okay to set a boundary around what time it's, you know, your child needs to go to sleep and how they go to sleep. So um, there's a lot of different ways to get your child to a place to change or disrupt that pattern um, and not have it be cried out. Um, so for example, one of the methods that I like to use is, um, especially for kids who kind of pop up and do that jack in the box thing, is, um, you leave and check on them. So, so kind of like if you've heard of the Ferber method when they're a baby, but it's a little bit different when they're older. So you're going to, when you put them to bed at night, you let them know that you are going to come and check on them every five minutes until they go to sleep, no matter what. So that's, it's a little different from a Ferber thing where you're waiting for them to cry and then you go back and, you know, check if they're crying and then you gradually sort of increase the time you're out of the room. The way I like to do it is to, no matter what, it's, you tell them that it's your job to check on them and it's their job to wait for you to check. So you kind of give them a job and you let them know you have a job too as the mom or the dad. 
So um, you can even set a timer for an older child who, you know, loves the idea of timers. Um, to, timers are really helpful for a lot of reasons. Um, one of them is setting boundaries. So you, you let them know that every five minutes you're going to come check and you really hold to that. So every five minutes you just kind of go to the door and you say, I'm checking on you. I love you. And that's it. That's it. There's nothing um, more that you're doing. You're not really engaging them any further, um, but you're just reminding them and letting them know that you love them, you care about them, and that it's also sending the message, it is time to go to sleep. There's absolutely nothing else happening at this moment. So your child might cry and they might get upset, but this technique really generally does help a lot because it, it sort of gives the child something else to think about like my mommy's coming back i'm waiting i'm just waiting for my mommy to come back and the fact that you do come back builds trust and it also builds self-confidence because they're in there by themselves waiting for you to come and you just basically agree that you're going to do that until they fall asleep and like i said i have found this to be a very you know useful tool or technique um, so I hope that gives you a couple of tips um, to use, but it is, you know, kind of a drawn out process. There's a lot that goes into figuring out, you know, what we need to do to help each child, you know, go to sleep on their own without leaving them alone to scream and cry. Um, but the bottom line is, you know, setting boundaries around sleep is super important and it doesn't make you a bad parent to want to do that. It doesn't break the connection with them. Um, in fact, it just helps build their own self-confidence, which is exactly what you want in their independence. I hope you enjoyed today's episode with Corey Greenberg. If you would like to hear more from Corey, she's going to be doing a workshop with me at Evelyn's Park, if you're listening to this in real time, March 4th, 2020. If you live in Houston, we will be at Evelyn's Park in Bel Air at 9.30 a.m. March 4th. So mark your calendars. Are you ready to start having productive conversations? Have you been listening to the podcast for a while and you hear me go through my three-step productive conversation process to solve any problem? And you're thinking, how does she do that? Guess what? I made a really cool resource for you guys. I call it the Problem Solving One Sheet. Okay, it's one sheet front and back, so, you know, take it with a grain of salt. But it will walk you through how to have productive conversations, and you'll practice, and before you know it, you'll be having productive conversations all day, every day. It really is the solution to solve any problem. So you can download it at mastermindparenting.com forward slash problem solving, all one word. That's mastermindparenting.com forward slash problem solving all one word.